Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into how we can connect your Spring Boot application to DynamoDB running inside AWS. In the last video, we have already seen what exactly is DynamoDB and how we can create tables inside DynamoDB. In this video, we will see how we can connect our Spring Boot application to DynamoDB and perform crude operations on DynamoDB table running inside AWS. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So Spring Boot plus DynamoDB. So pretty simple agenda. We are going to connect our Spring Boot application to DynamoDB table running inside AWS from our local, right? We will actually go ahead and perform some crude operations on table which is present inside DynamoDB on AWS from our Spring Boot application. Simple stuff. Now, if you remember, if I go back to Canvas, then we have seen something like this, right? So this is when we connected to our S3 bucket. And how did we do that? We did that by using S3 client. So we have a Spring Boot application. We add AWS SDK and we added a S3 client which help us to connect to S3 bucket. But this client don't know which S3 bucket to connect to in which AWS account, right? That is why we created a user for AWS and we added a permission to access S3 to that particular user and by using which it was able to connect to S3. So in the same fashion, we will connect to DynamoDB. It is pretty similar stuff. But in this case, we will not have S3 client. Rather, we will have a DynamoDB client, right? So in this case, we will have a DynamoDB client and we will give the similar user and we will now give the permission to access DynamoDB to this particular user as well, along with our S3 permission. So permission to access DynamoDB and same permission we will give to this particular user as well so that it will be able to access to S3 as well as it will be able to access to DynamoDB as well. Now, once we have this client, we will be able to perform operations on DynamoDB. Pretty simple stuff, pretty similar stuff that we have already seen for S3. Similar thing, we are going to look for our friend DynamoDB as well. So if you remember for S3, we have created this particular S3 config where we have created this S3 client, right? So one we have created for local and one we have created for dev environment, which we actually ran on EC2. And here we just created a simple AWS credentials. We provided these two credentials, which is basically access key and secret key, which we extracted from this particular user. We provided it over here and we have created this S3 client. And by using this S3 client, we just connected to S3. And when it comes to dev environment, so we have ran this particular stuff inside EC2 and for which we do not really need any credentials. So we did that by using default credential provider. For now, we will look into the local stuff. Similar to this one, similar to S3 config, what we need to do, we need to create a DynamoDB config now. DynamoDB config. So I already have created over here. So let me just open it. So if you see over here, this is basically DynamoDB enhanced config. So if you see over here, we are creating this particular DynamoDB enhanced client. Now, if you see over here, we are creating this DynamoDB client saying DynamoDB client dot builder. We are providing the region as we did in S3 and we are providing this access key and secret key by using credential provider and building it. Right. So this gives us DynamoDB client. But now we are creating a bean of DynamoDB enhanced client. Now, what exactly is DynamoDB enhanced client? DynamoDB enhanced client is basically a client which will help us for object mapping inside our application, right? So if you know ORM, that is object relational mapping, right? So in the similar case, this enhanced client will help us to map our entity to DynamoDB table, right? So that is why we are making use of this DynamoDB enhanced client, which will basically use DynamoDB client itself. So we are saying DynamoDB enhanced client or builder. We are passing this DynamoDB client and we are saying build. So it will just return that. And here, if you see, I'm creating one for dev environment. And here I'm passing default credentials provider so that when we deploy it to EC2, it will be able to connect to our DynamoDB seamlessly without making use of any of these credentials. So that is basically our DynamoDB enhanced config. Now what I will do, I will quickly write a code for performing CRUD operations on DynamoDB. Right. So if you see over here, I have created this particular product. The product is basically an entity which contains your ID, name and price. And if you see over here, this get ID will be our DynamoDB partition key. So we have partition key, right? Kind of a primary key inside our DynamoDB table. 
so i have highlighted it by using this particular annotation which will make it as a primary key and if you see over here we are marking this as dynamo db bean it is similar to entity inside our spring boot application just that this annotation will map this product with a dynamo db table and these are basically few lombok annotations so should be fine now if you see over here i have this particular controller which is basically product controller so here i have post mapping to add the data here i have get mapping to get the data by using id here again i have get all products here i have put mapping to update stuff after that i have delete mapping right so all the operations i'm performing over here if i go to product service then we will have product repository injected and we are performing operations by using this repository while creating the product we will say repository.save while getting we will say repository.find by id for getting all product we will use find all and if i go inside product repository then here are the important stuff so if you see over here we are injecting this client that we have created this particular dynamo db enhanced client right so we are injecting it in the repository and here we are creating a dynamo db table product and we are naming it as product table now when we create this bean in the init what i'm doing i'm just injecting the value of this particular table so here what i'm doing dynamo db client dot table and what is the table name the table name is product so when we create a table inside dynamo db we need this particular table basically so the name of the table will be this one and the table schema will be basically coming from the same bean so it is basically what is the entity of your table that is what we are going to provide over here which is basically this particular product the product table now the product table values will be injected while this particular bean is created by using this particular client and when we say save we will just say product table dot put item and we'll just add the product and it will just add it for us find by id will just give this particular id as partition key and get the value for us find all will just get all the items so product table dot scan items and for each we will just add all the items inside this particular product list and we will just return it and when we say delete we will just delete the item for that particular partition key so pretty simple stuff right so nothing complex over here just this part we need to understand where we are creating this particular dynamo db table object with a product as entity by using this particular dynamo db enhanced client right pretty simple stuff now what we need is we need to go inside aws and create a dynamo db table so if i go inside dynamo db then i have already created a dynamo db table for us so if i go inside table so you will see this product table so how to create this product table it is very easy and that is something i have covered in the last video so you can go ahead and check that out so if you see over here we have this table and if i go to explore items then you will see that we don't have any items over here now if i go back over here now we have dynamo db client we have created dynamo db table but we need to create a user with a permission to access dynamo db so let's go to iam so this also we know how to create it we have seen it in iam videos so if you see over here if i go inside users then you will see that there is this particular user that i have created and now this particular user have these permissions so permissions to access dynamo db full access so it's amazon dynamo db full access so that it is able to perform all the operations on your dynamo db table after that we have ec2 access we have s3 access we have lambda full access right so this particular user is a part of this group developer group which have all these access that's why our user is getting all these access right so now we have user as well now what we need we need a access key so there is this access key we have already created and the details of this access key we need to add where inside our application local dot properties so here if you see i have added these properties this is basically access key this is basically secret key which i have picked up from our aws from here itself right and i'm giving the name as ap south one because my dynamo db table is present inside ap south one region if i go back to dynamo db and if i go inside tables then you will see that this particular table is basically present inside ap south one region right ap south one so that particular region i'm giving it over here and all these things will be picked up when we actually go ahead and create this particular enhanced client 
so here we have this access key and here we have the secret which is basically the one which we are picking up from this particular application local dot properties file this particular file right so now what we will do we have everything in place so let's try to run this code i'll just say stop and rerun so our application is up now what we can do let me just pull up postman and what we will do now so this is basically our post api so let's try to add this particular product i will just say send if you see over here it gave us 200 now what we can do let's go inside dynamo debit table let's say explore items and now if you can see over here we have one entry with id1 and here we have the data right so if i see json view then you will see this particular json we have just sent now let's try to add one more probably so i will say id so i will say id2 i will say iphone and here i will say 54000 probably and let's try to send it if you see this created if i go back to dynamodb and refresh this you will see us id2 is created and here is basically the details of our iphone that is basically how you can simply perform operations on dynamodb from your local so that is how you can simply connect to aws dynamodb from your spring boot application running inside your local right so it is pretty simple stuff but now we will not be running our application from local always right so what we need we need to connect our spring boot application which is running inside ec2 instance to dynamodb from local right and that is again similar to what we have seen in the s3 right so what we can do just order to segregate the videos i will create another video for that so in this video what we have seen we have seen how we can connect our spring boot application to dynamodb from our local right by using a user and its credentials so in the next video we will see how we can do that by using ec2 I will push this repository on github and i will put the link in description you can go ahead and check it out it is pretty simple stuff so we have seen how we can connect to this particular dynamo db table from local and we are successfully able to insert this particular data inside this particular database and all other crude operations also you can do just fine so if i just say get and let me try to fetch the product so if you see over here we are getting all the list of products right so all other operations you will be able to perform just fine so in the next video we will see how we can connect to dynamodb from a ec2 instance from an application or a spring boot application running inside ec2 instance and we will again perform the same kind of operations that is again will be pretty similar to what we have seen in the s3 but we will see that again in the next video so if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about how to connect dynamodb table from your spring boot application that's it for this video. See you in the next video.